Hi guys, Matt Lemke here with your Gamer Goggles, Gamer-Goggles.com and today we're going to talk about the Pathfinder Remaster and I have been waiting to do this for quite a while. I'm so glad that I got my physical copies. Uh, Paizo did give me a PDF that I have, uh, well, I struggle with PDFs. I don't do well at reading them. Um, I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's a computer screen. I don't have like a Kindle or a tablet and it doesn't feel like a book. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to talk about the Pathfinder Remaster. Uh, this is just a real brief overview of some of the things that changed. Uh, my thoughts will be at the end as to who it's for, uh, why I am or am not moving forward with the remaster, uh, and, well, why it is relevant or why some of the things came about. Now, what I will not be doing is talking about the open game license thing that happened months ago. Yes, it did push forward a lot of the things that uh, Paizo has been talking about, uh, for those of you that know me, I've been role-playing since, or don't know me, I've been role-playing since 1986, uh, and, well, I'm going the wrong way. Um, I've been reviewing since 2011. Um, Paizo and I have had a long-time relationship where we've done things, and uh, sometimes I get to chat with them off-screen and camera. Alignment, for example, is one of those things that they've been moving away from since, I think... I can remember conversations as early as uh, before the playtest they were talking about how alignment's not really relevant with me in some of the discussions we had off camera. Uh, anyway, so the first thing that I heard about, uh, even before the books came out, oh well, actually I want to share some things, like look at this art. Uh, you know, and I'll, I'll pull some things up throughout, and this isn't going to be a traditional playthrough. Uh, was the loss of spell schools. Uh, the truth is, and actually I'm going to move over a little bit. Wait, I gotta go this way. I want to be in the center of the camera. Um, uh, the truth is they kind of haven't changed. It's just that they've taken a lot of the jargon out and a lot of the stuff out uh, and they've made it much more streamlined. Uh, and with that said, spell school, they're still calling them, what are they calling them? Oh, the traditions and styles now. Um, and when I say eight, the eight traditional schools are gone, I mean like evocation, summoning, etc. You still have the traditions that Pathfinder was moving to of, um, not lore, arcane, divine, occult, and I always want to call it nature, but it's not nature. <laughs> I've wanted to call it nature since the playtest. Uh, now, with that said, now a school to me is much more, you know, the schools now are much more like colleges. Uh, and you, this mechanically, I think, is going to have some great potential in the future. I don't really see it yet, and I, I, I foresee a lot of things where they're going to do move spells to spell schools that are within like the incorporated into classes or or however they incorporate the traditions. You're going to see them move much more into a cleric type style of uh, not the anathema, but the layout where you get these bonus spells and all that, which I think you're already starting to see, but I think they're really going to develop it and take it to the next level. Uh, and then there's uh, quite a few word changes in the book. Uh, flat guard is now off guard. Attack of opportunity is now reactive strike, which I actually like that wording a lot better. Uh, it, it, it plays more with the action economy. Um, spell level is spell rank. Uh, it doesn't seem to have changed that much. I haven't dove, dove in. Yeah, I haven't dove into be the, the wizard class yet or the any of the spellcasters yet, so we'll, we can come back on that. Now, one of the things I do like a lot is um, negative energy and positive energy have both changed. In they have become uh, void in vitality. And to me, positive and negative energy never felt quite right in a role-playing game. Uh, the idea of uh, life versus void or absence of life seems to be a much better balance and much better for storytelling. Uh, I know that I'm going to be able to use this in my game world that I've been creating. 
um, and my my players have been playing in, and we're gonna definitely play it play it up a lot more. Um, Meta Magic is now Spell Shape, and again, that's something that I never really dove into in Pathfinder at all, because uh, I mostly played Rogues and stuff like that, and didn't really see a need for it as a GM. Uh, so, we'll, but we'll take a look and see how it differs later on. Um, alignment is gone, and this kind of saddens me. And the reason why it saddens me is alignment is one of those things that really mechanically has not a whole lot to do with uh, the game or uh, game structure and play. But from a player's perspective, it is kind of annoying and a hindrance, and the GM can use it as a tool for character development. Um, like, there's not a lot of things out there. Like, yes, Paizo offers Anathema, which I think is on page 39 now uh, of the, the core book. Yeah, starts on page 35, basically. And they give you constraints to follow. Alignment of lawful good neutral evil, they give you more constraints to follow and they are an immediate guide for a character uh, and how a character might choose to do things within their personality. Uh, one of the things that I do as a GM is I'm going to I'm going to continue to adhere to the idea of alignment, um, but it's, it's, not, it's not rigid. It's a loose structure in my games uh, and it's just like, okay, you're going to go behead that guy, but you're a lawful good character or you're a neutral good character would you really do that is that something your beliefs do and and i just use it it's basically a tool to challenge people now with that said i'm also going to incorporate anathema in in it for everyone i hope i say anathema right i've always think i always think i say that wrong um and i really hope that they continue to develop anathema and that they take the whole uh, idea of the religious concept or how you can apply it to philosophies and cults and uh, different types of thinking to help develop characters actually get into role-playing and creating a character that is of uh, novel quality and I think that's one of the greatest challenges as a player is making your character into something that other people would want to read about not just some guy who walks around and hacks and slashes all the time, but I mean, you know, has some other traits that make him uh, a viable character. In other words, they need some kind of conflict in their life. They need some kind of struggle. Um, and then the uh, next biggie, I think, is sanctification, which is basically the struggle of holy and unholy, because uh, good and evil are going away. I like this a lot but my opinion is biased because I have a whole game world where the struggle between angels and demons is going to be a very, very important thing that my players haven't yet expanded upon. Uh, I think Unholy and Holy is going to take the storytelling portion of it to new levels that good and evil could not possibly touch uh, because good and evil are so abstract, right? Um, holy and Unholy are very un abstract either, but I think there is less of a gray line when you think of holy and unholy than there is against evil and good or good and evil. Uh, classes. So the main classes in the book are now fighter, rogue, wizard, cleric, witch, ranger, and druid. So I'm really kind of surprised that they removed the alchemist because there was such a big ordeal about it um, being in the path, uh, Pathfinder 2 playtest. Uh, and I hope that means that there's more cool things coming in the next, the next uh, remaster book. Uh, and I was really kind of surprised to see the witch get the remake that it got. And if you guys haven't, you know, known about that, please ask. You know, just ask me questions. Tell me if you want to do things like deep dives into classes. That's not something I've ever done. I've pretty much strictly reviewed and talked a little bit about like role-playing philosophy and things like that uh you can check out those videos in one of the links above anyway back to this now ancestries uh, i think one of the coolest things that they're doing here is they are giving you some half breeds or half -breed, i'm calling them half breeds because they're half and half you know um and it, it kind of reminds me of uh, some things that can cause tension and conflict in story and in literature so 
but they're giving you basically a template to create any half ancestries that you wish to create. So you can be half dwarf, half um, goblin, and what would that be like? So the, I, I really love that freedom. I, it always bothered me it, as long as I've been playing any of the role-playing games. I mean, okay, I was always confused as a kid, like in sixth grade, when you had a class of fighter, thief, wizard, elf, dwarf. Those were your classes in the original game. I mean, I might have missed one or two. And I'm glad that it evolved into having races and then ancestries over time. But it always bothered me that there was only like half elf for the longest time. Why could nothing else be half? It just bothered me. It was, it seemed um, unfair. I always felt that everything else was cheated. Um, now, uh, so then there's the, they also uh, open the book. It's picture time. Um, they included the heritages of, oh no, it's not, where are they? Uh, or should I say, yeah, here we go. The versatile heritages of Changeling, which I think is a very interesting choice for the core book. Nephilim, which is much broader than I thought it was, and to me, Nephilim are giants. Uh, they are not in Pathfinder. And the, oh, the other one is Mixed Ancestries, is what they're calling them. I called it, I wrote it down as half breeds because it's half and half. In, um, in my game world, I actually have something where one of the ancestries is rather diabolic and they're actually breeding, joining uh, different species together to see what they can come up with. So I really am happy about this template for that. Um, and in my notes in that, I called them half breeds. Uh, anyway, enough about that part. Sorry. Uh, it, uh, Ranting. Um, so there are some rules fixes that they made, uh, things that they've improved. Uh, a lot of wording has changed. And that, again, I've said that before, but that, that is really a big part of what happened here with the Pathfinder remaster. So now, Interact is much better than it ever was before. Interact allows you uh, swapping. I have a knife. I'm allowed to swap it with whatever's on my belt or my pouch or or whatever um, as an interact action which makes it much better you're not going to lose actions of I have to switch my weapon because I'm fighting this thing that is immune to pierce damage or or whatever um, aid aid is much better now it's a DC of 15 we can talk more about the stuff of that the one change that I really really like a lot uh, is disarm. It's something that I never used to use, never wanted to try, but now I want to try it. So disarm now works off of a, uh, well, it's it's a it's a roll, of course, but on a crit success, the opponent drops the weapon. Uh, on a success, it's negative two for them to strike until they interact with the weapon. Um, fail, they just you just fail. On a crit fail, um, they become off guard. Maybe I read that wrong. Maybe you're off guard. It seems like you should be penalized. I will have to double check that. I'll put that in the notes. Um, oh, I don't know what happened to reposition. Some of my notes got disappeared. Another big change is recall knowledge. You now tell your GMs what skill you're using and what the question is. And then your GM gives you your options of uh, ancestry lore, uh, survival, whatever. Uh, and then you recall knowledge and you roll the d20 plus your agreed skill, right? And then you get the answer. I'm pretty sure this is how we play it in our game and have been playing it. And I'm glad that the change comes to reflect what we moved to do. Um, 
dyeing changed a little bit. It was clarified and ratted, so I'm not going to dive into that. Oh, big, big, big change. Character sheet. Holy cows, character sheet. Uh, no more ability scores, just modifiers. So, the character sheet now looks like this on pages one and two. With all your skills here. Your modifiers are up here. It's a much better layout. I haven't used it yet, so I haven't made a character. I do plan on making uh, a Pathfinder Remastered character video. Here's page three and four if you need them. And I think there's one more. Nope, that, that's it. That's the last page. Uh, so yeah, so this, the whole idea of the ability score is kind of disappeared with Pathfinder. Maybe they were already gone in technically 3.5. You didn't really use them for much of anything. Um, I think the last time you effectively used ability scores was in Dungeons and Dragons 2nd Edition. Uh, oh, and they changed uh, how you regain focus. So follow me with this. I My notes are a little bit scattered. So now you can regain focus by focusing or meditating for 10 minutes and you, reg you regain X. I don't remember what the X is. It used to be that you could only ever regain one focus point after a battle. Now you can do your meditation or your prayer or whatever it is uh, from your game context. Um, missing a page uh, until you're back up to full focus points which is huge because focus points are phenomenal uh, if you don't have a chance to use them it would be wonderful if you did now we're just going to flip through the book a little bit I mean basically I'm going to share some art uh, the player core is a much smaller well do I have one out shoot I don't so this was originally pretty much what the core rule book looked like. By breaking it down into two books, you have everything that the GM and a player needs to make characters to their fullest, play the game, all the rules are in the player core now, and start adventuring. The GM core is now pretty much broken down for GMs to add things to their campaign, um, teach you how to run adventures. There's, let's see, just look, taking a look at, oh, I should show you their art too. The GM Core art's pretty darn good. The art in these books is phenomenal, and I'm so glad that I bought the black and white cover. Uh, so, the table of contents. Basically, you have running the game, which is a big, big part of Pathfinder. So, the the GM Core basically has taken stuff from the original Core rulebook, and the uh, Game Mastery Guide and combined it into here into useful tools. Uh, of the two books, I would say you don't need this one to play the game. Uh, it is beneficial. There are things that I, I use in it because I used them in the other books uh, and I still use them, uh, like the differences of encounter and travel. Uh, the treasure trove is in here, different rules for the subsystems reputation leadership stuff like that uh, building games I use a little bit of that and oh there's this the big thing in here is a um, the age of lost omens there's an overview of it now what's not in here that I do miss is uh, NPCs but they did come out with the deck of endless NPCs so posting it in here may not might not be as relevant um, the largest section of the player core is really playing the game, which has got about 95 pages to it. Yeah, around well, around 80 pages. Everything else, you know, is there. So who is the remaster for, or why should you, or why shouldn't you buy it? Uh, so if you're comfortable playing Pathfinder 2 right now in its... Uh, the way it is and you don't have all the books and you want to just keep doing what you're doing 
you don't need to buy these. Um, if you want to be up to date and current with where they're going with the orc license and uh, the things that they're going to be doing and how they change the witch, uh, you you can definitely you can definitely buy in. And uh, I'm going to continue to buy in. I like the changes they've made. Uh, I think some of the clarifications they did. Now, uh, the other thing is that you may not want to buy them um, because they are on the pricey side. And that just seems to be a trend in the gaming industry. They're both $59 a piece. Uh, technically $60, they're $59.99. So they might not fit your budget. So of course, there's always the PDF, but if you're like me, you struggle to read PDFs. Um, who is it for? It's, it's really for anybody getting into the game new. Uh, if you're gonna get into Pathfinder 2, this is the way to go, because this is the future. Uh, if you are um, just a, a, a diehard Paizo fan, this book right here is the way to go. See if your store has any more. Uh, this thing is awesome. I can't tell you. I mean, there's nothing different on the inside. It, it's just the cover. Um, oh yeah, this one is probably this one was probably a little bit more expensive than the regular core rule book. Sorry. Uh, who and then. If you're uh, new to role playing, this is the right way to go to. If you're converting from D and D, it doesn't really matter. So really, the biggest thing is it. It all depends on what you want your future to hold. Do you want to be up to date with the orc licensing stuff? Uh, because things like uh, archives of Nethys are going to reflect what's in print uh, easier. Yes, there's going to be legacy, but I don't know how well it's going to be broken down for you. And um, you know, this summer they came out with the the Rage of Elements, and it prompted a core preview that they gave out at Gen Con. And the core preview was designed to help you use the Kineticist. They were already moving that direction before the remasters came out, uh, and they well they did that all because of the OGL that happened. Uh, so guys, thanks for watching. I hope you st stuck around this long, and. My camera confused me. You know, I am at a turning point with what I do. I've not do, been doing as many reviews. I want to start branching out into other content. I want to know what you guys want me to do. Um, I've never done deep dives. I probably can. I can do them. I definitely want to do a how to play Pathfinder. I've got miniature game stuff that I got to work on that I love to do. My son and I want to start doing battle reports for X Wing. I'm thinking about some live play for Pathfinder consistency has been the problem for that uh, but I definitely want to get more consistent I want to be able to post something about RPGs every other week I've got about 15 books that I need to review that I got at Gen Con that I haven't been able to totally read yet uh, anyway thanks for watching guys I appreciate you all let me know what you want to see how in depth do you just want flip throughs do you want full reviews because uh, there's there's a very big difference in time later Meet the Nibbles, who's gonna go down. <laughs> she just did, decided not to go down my back, so we'll do this for her, so she's comfy. Uh, thanks for watching my video, and I appreciate it. Uh, please, please hit the like button uh, and and share it if you you know know somebody who might be interested. And of course, there's always Twitter and the Facebook thingy, and soon I have a newsletter coming that'll be down there or in a link below and. My kitty cat loves that idea. Uh, so, anyway, uh, there was one more thing. There was one more thing. Oh, yeah. Subscribe. Be a part of my community. Our community. Let's make it grow together. See you guys at a con somewhere. Or a local store. Or if I'm driving through the country, maybe a game club. I don't know. You're not going to go knock down my camera. Bye, guys.